the sound of a whip. A whip lashing the bare back of an African slave. I, James Swizzom, heard the whistle and crack of that punishing whip and saw for the first time a human being in torment. Much as I wanted to, I couldn't stop that legal flogging. But then and there I took an oath I was never to forget. That I would raise my voice against all cruelty with all my strength and with all my heart's devotion. And that no one should ever still my voice, nor force me to silence in the presence of this evil thing. Out of Jane's resolution came a famous anti-slavery newspaper under her own editorship. A journal edited and published not in ladylike genteel protest, but in hot, clamorous anger. With the paper came trouble, of course, and with the anger long maintained at white heat came illness. Illness, and at last an enforced rest at the house of Jane's sister in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Liz! Liz! Oh, you're really here. It can't be oh. big sister, Jane. Now, Henry, who else could it be? I'm very glad to meet you, Henry. <laughs> big sister, literary Amazon, female abolitionist. Why, you can't be up to the five-foot mark. Henry, she's my sister, not a stand of timber. <laughs> All right. You girls get in the buggy. That's it. I'll put your traveling case right here, Jane. Thanks. Golly, Liz, you sound right pretty. Henry. All right, all right. Just what I was good and scared. After all we've heard about you, Jane, well, I, I sure am relieved to lay eyes on you. I thought we might be in for trouble. <laughs> Get up there. Get up. Come on, boy. Well, Jane, this is St. Cloud, all of it. That's an Indian over there, isn't it? Mm-hmm. He's a Sioux, and they still go on the warpath sometimes. Oh, Liz, this is thrilling. I can't tell you how much I've been looking forward to your cabin at the lake. Oh, you wait till you see it, Jane. Just the thing for tired lady editors, especially eastern lady editors. No trouble. What's Get that up. over there? Hmm? Henry, stop the carriage. Sure. Oh, oh, boy. Jane, what's the matter? I don't see anything. There, that Negro man sweeping up in front of the saloon. I thought I saw... It is. That's a slave chain on his leg. Aren't there any hacksaws in Minnesota? We can't rightly take it off. He don't belong to us. Human beings can't belong to anybody. But now, Jane, you see... Well, Captain Seely, he owns that saloon and sort of runs the politics hereabouts. That's his slave. But this is a, a, a free territory. This is the north. Well, of course, Jane, but the captain has a farm, a plantation downriver in Missouri. Pretty hard to get any hired help out here these days, Jane. Real hard. So, Seely brings a few of his boys up with him. Well, some of us don't like it much, but well, nobody wants to make trouble. So, get up. Come on, boy. Nobody wants to make trouble. Nobody has gumption enough to speak up now, against now, the... Now, now, Janie, Cap Seeley's not such a bad sort. Runs things sort of high, wide, and handsome, but things do get run. Oh, he's just a terrible man, Jane. You've never met anyone like him back east. I wouldn't be too sure about that, Liz. Henry, are, are you sure nobody cares about such things? Here, here in this pretty town to see a man in chains. Well, I'll tell you. Lots of folks are getting more than a little tired of Cap Seeley, but not tired enough. You see, he sort of lends those slaves of his around. For free, too. Useful to have on the place when you're shorthanded, like. Easy, Prince. Easy there. Over. He sort of lends the slaves around? Sure. And there's no charge for the labor? Well, it ain't written down in front of no notary public, but uh, you don't use the captain's slaves and then vote against the captain's candidate uh, come election. I see. Uh huh. Henry, what this town needs is a good newspaper, a voice. Had one. <laughs> Wouldn't call it good, exactly. It's a voice that was, uh, well, sort of hoarse. Who ran it? Cap Seeley's brother-in-law. As an editor, he couldn't even spell C-A-T. But he got plenty of ads, thanks to the captain. Drank up all the profits, though. Hey. Oh, hold that. Henry, why are you stopping here? Jane. Jane, you see that shack over there all boarded up? Inside's a printing press. You still looking for trouble, Jane? I... I, I don't know. But why? Know who owns that press? I do. Me, Henry Mitchell. Took it over for bad debts when Celia got tired paying up for his drunken relation. Press still works, Jane. Want to be a voice in the wilderness? No. No, I, I won't do it. I, 
I came out here for a rest. I need a rest. I, I'm not going to start another news. I'm not going to do it. That's the boy, Josie. You're going to be a good journeyman printer when you grow up. Ink on your thumbs, boy? Ink on my thumbs, ma'am. Ink on your nose? All over my nose, ma'am. Ink in your hair? And behind my ears, ma'am. Ma'am, I'm all over ink. I love it. Good. It's the finest smudge and the finest smell in the world, Josie. The smell of printer's ink. It's the smell of truth, if you make it so. You know what we're turning out here? No, I'm... I can't read so very good yet. It's a handbill, Josie, saying our first issue will be out tomorrow. I'll see who it is. Good morning. Good morning indeed, Mrs. Switham. A rare morning. An effulgent, I may say, a sparkling, a positively delightful morning. Seeley's the name. <laughs> Captain Marcus Aurelius Fortunatus Seeley, at your service. A pleasure, I'm sure, Captain. Mrs. Switham, I am truly and deeply sorry that I was not among those present here in St. Cloud upon the day of your arrival, so that I might have extended to you an official welcome on behalf of our town and on behalf of our state. Your fame has preceded you, ma'am, but, uh, I've been down the river on business. Your business up and down the river doesn't appeal to me, Captain. And I intend to say as much in my paper tomorrow. Ma'am, my friends call me Cap. Captain sounds sort of formal. Yes, doesn't <laughs> it, Captain? Oh, now, now, ma'am. That's no way to talk. You and me, we've got to get along. I run this part of the state. You seem to be set on running the only newspaper in my neck of the woods. <laughs> well, you and me, we've got interests in common. Lots of them. What you might call a community of interest. Captain Seeley, you own slaves, do you not? Why, in Missouri, yes. With the full consent of the law, ma'am. And in Minnesota, with the cowardly connivance of the people who don't want any trouble. What you're aiming at is to make this a slave state. That's true, isn't it? Mind if I smoke, Janie? Captain Seeley, I think you'd better get out of here. Well, <laughs> I guess you don't care if I burn, huh? <laughs> That's an old joke, ma'am. It's an old uh, Missouri joke. Now look here, you female martyr. There's work to be done in this new state. There ain't enough white men out here yet to get it done, so I aim to import a few strong backs to bear the burdens that have to be borne if we're going to reach anywhere here in Minnesota. That's my business. Your newspaper is my business, too. Look at it this way, Mrs. Martyr. This is a spread-out town, mainly farms and scattered homesteads all over the county. You've got to distribute your paper through the post office, correct? And, of course, you are postmaster or some such thing. Some such thing. I manage things in general around here. I license your paper to go through the mails, or I don't. Captain Seeley, do you seriously expect me to submit to censorship from you? Oh, great heavens, no, Janie, no. I'm an easy-going man. I like everything smooth. Smooth and understood in advance. We settle it now. You either get a license or you don't. Oh. I either agree, here and now, to support slavery or no paper. Is that it? Well, ma'am, you're famous as an abolitionist. I wouldn't expect you to come right out and support slavery in Minnesota. <laughs> Just don't mention it. All you have to do is support me. It's uh, almost, but not quite, the same thing. You see, I, I want to make it easy as I can for you. Yes, yes, of course, that does make it easier. <laughs> I knew it. I figured you for a woman of sense. I said to myself, a woman who got to be as... as Famous as that. She's had to learn the ways of the world. It's a deal, then? I have no other course, Captain. Have I? I'll have to rewrite my editorial for tomorrow, but it's a deal. Everything under control? Everything hunky-dory? Morning, Cap. Oh, yeah. Business is fine. Yeah. Hey, Silly. Hey, Cap Silly. What is it, Perkins? I thought you said you'd bought out that Mrs., uh, what's her name? Is that her paper? It sure is. Listen to this. Editorial, it says. Well? Oh. In order to publish the same cloud visitor at all, this editor has had to agree to support Captain Marcus Seeley, which is the same as supporting slavery. 
Thus, this is the first of a series of editorials which will explain why we should have slavery in the North as well as in the South. Well, she did sell out. Why? It is a marvelously efficient social institution, slavery. The only one ever thought of in which we can, at one and the same time, offend both the majesty of God and the dignity of man. Go on. Yeah. Uh, dignity of man. Yeah. Oh, in conclusion, let us say that no one could give slavery more honest support than we will here in these columns. All the others merely pretend to be supporting it while giving forth fake arguments. We shall tell the true reasons why all wicked men should support Captain Seeley and his hopes of making Minnesota a slave state. <laughs> hey, well, hey, you ain't going to turn out to be a good loser, are you? A good loser? Perk, I'm going to be even better than that. A winner. Well, uh, Cap, viewed from here, you ain't no top man as of now. No? I'll show you who's the loser and who's the winner. You two. Huh? Yeah. You got a date tonight at midnight. All right, keep it quiet now. Cap, this press here belongs to Henry Mitchell. We can't break it up. Break it up? Why, that'd be against the law, Embry, to get people mad. You ever know me to go around and get people mad? Well, then, what are we doing here? <laughs> I'll show you, Perkins. Bring a light. Now, where's all the sticks of type? Now, there's... Uh, let me see. Uh, this row here, and this one, and this one. Yeah. Uh, let's go to work. Uh, here, too. Mustn't forget the small type. What do you mean, Cap? Go to work. Oh, Embry, you're dumb. Always will be dumb. These are all the S's. If she don't have any S's... She ain't going to write about slavery, is she? Or Seeley either, for that matter. <laughs> Shut up, Bimbley. I got to hand it to you, Cap. All right, come on, fill your pockets. And then we'll go down and throw every blessed ass that she's got into the Mississippi. Into the Millilithi, you mean. <laughs> I think that should do it. Jane, you look so tired. Can I get you some hot milk? Oh, fine, Liz, thank you. I just never realized how many S's there are in the simplest sentence. Well, let's hear it. All right. We'll distribute it by itself on a single sheet. I simply can't write a whole S-less newspaper. It's headed Captain Ely. <laughs> Captain Ely. Now, this is serious business to me, Henry. Now, listen. You all know of Captain Ely and the plan to import legal knavery into your territory. Legal knavery. Henry, be quiet. <laughs> the time has come for truth. The good captain worketh and toileth mightily, but with one motive and no other, to make Ely money for Ely by trading in Negro people, men and women of goodwill. You named your territory with an Indian word for the clear blue water of a mountain lake, water far too clean and pure for the lowly, lippery, liming, mud-loving eagle. <laughs> The lowly, lippery, limey, mud loving eel. Oh, you're very funny, ain't you, Perkins? Hey, hey, Come Captain, on. Captain, 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 me. It's her. Captain, let go. I told you all often enough I'm a winner. Good winner. Never a loser. In this town, by all that's holy, I keep the score. Words on paper, stinking printer's ink that don't mean a thing. What did words ever get anybody? It's action that counts. As sure as my name's Marcus Seeley. That swism woman is going to be out of action for good and all. This time tomorrow. You are listening to The Cavalcade of America. Tonight's play, Troublesome Jane, starring Ruth Hussey with Kenny Delmar. In St. Cloud, Minnesota... Almost a century ago, a woman editor, Jane Swism, noted as an abolitionist, started a newspaper. It was a thorn in the side of Captain Marcus Seeley, the town's pro-slavery boss, and he's sworn to stop Jane from publishing it. And he's taken desperate action, action which results in... Fire! Done? 
Yep, I heard. Might have burned down the whole town. That's included. Burned us in our bed. Yep. Well, ain't you men going to do something about it? I expect we are. What? At the moment, woman, I don't rightly know. Ask me that Miss Swism had it coming to her. Screwing at him all the time. Ain't womanly. Make anybody mad. I don't like newspapers. Can't read anyway much. Like fires, though. Nice fire, Gillis. Guess you're against the talk about lynching him then, huh? Lynching, huh? Well, now that's something else again. Always did like a good lynching. Better than the fire. This is close enough, Jane, and for heaven's sake, stay back against the wall where they can't see you. Henry, we can't let them lynch him. We can't. All right, neighbors. It looks to me like it's past stopping, Jane. Let's... All right, all right. We all know what we've got to decide tonight. We've been patient for a long time. But you know and I know what we've been patient against. <laughs> now, some of the boys are sitting in the room there with Zealy. Just making sure he don't go anywhere. They've been there all morning. So there wouldn't be no need for them guns I see some of you brought. I got a rope here. Let's get to work. Now, hold on. Hold on. Before we do any lynching, there's one thing we got to think about. Lynch They've got to be stopped. They've got to. Jane, where are you going? Jane, come back here. Wait a minute. Please. Let me speak. Wait, gentlemen. Please, gentlemen. I I don't like Steely. I hate everything he stands for. I hate slavery, as you all know, and I hate one-man rule. That's what Steely has enjoyed in this town up till now. I hate one-man rule almost as much as I hate mob rule, lawless rule, and that's what lynching would be. Go back where you came from and let us run our own town. Yeah. Please. Wait a minute. It, it, it was Henry Mitchell and my, myself who who were hurt by the fire. It was, it was his building that was burned up and my paper that was put out of publication. But I say this to you. You, you, you can't lynch Seeley. Oh, please, please, you can't do that. Let's show her what we can do, boys. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Now, let me finish. Please, let me finish. What, what Seeley hated and tried to stop when he burned down our shop was something called freedom of the press. Yes, I know, I know. Words, words, words. You're all tired of words. But words are important. Seeley doesn't believe in words. He doesn't believe in reason. He doesn't believe in anything. But he's a man. And you are men. And you must hear him before you do this terrible thing to him and to yourselves. If you judge Seeley without hearing him, you'll be doing just exactly what he tried to do to me and to my paper. Oh, yeah, well, we'll take care of Seeley. Gentlemen, gentlemen, you, you have no proof that, that Seeley set the fire. I think he did it. You think he did. But we have no proof. Listen now, she's right. Let's hear Seeley. Let's hear what he has to say. Uh, Potter. Hey, Potter. Bring Seeley over here. Stand back, Tush. Stand back. Stand back. Stand back. All of you. Let him through. All right, help him up, boys. Everybody, quiet down. Quiet down. Now, we're going to hear Seeley. What? What's it? I didn't set fire to anything. Listen to me. Hear my side. Hear my side. Yes, my men, this time yesterday, you were all my friends. I ain't a violent man. You ought to know it. Now, here's the truth. Maybe you'll want to lynch me for this, too, for all I know. This is what happened. See, I was mad at Mr. Swism. Good and mad. Some of the boys and me, we got crowbars in early, just about dawn it was. Three of us went down there. We got, we broke up that press. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we broke up the press and some of the pieces we threw in the river. But there wasn't any fire, no fire at all. What would I set a fire for? My own saloon's only a half a block away. You think I want, want it burned down? I broke up a press, I admit it. And, and I promise here now to buy a new one. That, that ain't no lynching offense. As for the fire, no, I swear, no, I swear. Right I didn't fire. Oh, fire. Oh, 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 oh,
with him is Josie. Oh, I did it. I did it. I set the fire. Josie, come up here. Help him up, Henry. I did it. Now, 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 what is it? Mrs. Witham, ma'am. I, I'm afraid I started that fire. I'm afraid I did. Gentlemen, gentlemen, this, this boy is Josie Allen, as you all know. As you also know, Joe is an orphan. He works for me, and he lives in a room over what was my shop. Now, now, Josie, you, you tell us quietly, quietly, what happened? Well, they woke me up, smashing up the press they were, and I lit, lit the lamp and went to the head of the stairs to see. Well, I was scared. Of course you were. Well, when they'd gone, right after they'd gone, I went downstairs and I fell and the lamp broke and I... Gentlemen, do, do you see what happened? Do you understand? Any more talk of lynching? All right, boys. Guess we better ramble on home. Maybe while we're rambling, we better kick ourselves once in a while. The boy, Josie. You're going at a great rate. This is a real good press, ma'am. This is a wing-ding of a press. Well, there's the door. I'll go. Why, why, good morning. Come in. Morning, Miss Grissom. Morning, ma'am. You wish to see me? Yes, ma'am. My name's Moses. I belong down the river. Down on the Captain Seeley's plantation. Oh, why, yes, yes, of course. I saw you the day I got here. You may not know it, Moses, but it was because of you that I started this newspaper. Yes, ma'am. And Captain Seeley, he says to give you these. Why, leg irons. The leg irons you were wearing that day. Yes, ma'am. You see, the Captain, he's free in it. Me and all of us, and, and I'm going to get paid a wage in money. You thought maybe these eyes would make sort of a membrane for you. All you, all you've done here. Good day, ma'am. Good day to you. Well, thank you, Moses. Well, thank you, Josie. Coming, ma'am. Coming right up. Ink on your thumb, Josie. Uh huh. All my thumb. Fingers, too, all inked up. Uh, ink on your nose, boy? All over my nose. Ink on your ears, on your elbows, and your hair. Ink in your soul, Josie? Wouldn't quite know about that, ma'am. Someday you will, Josie. Someday you will. <laughs> Now, a word about next week's show. We're very happy to announce we'll have with us one of America's best-known storytellers, John Nesbitt. All of us have enjoyed seeing his MGM series, The Passing Parade, for many years. Well, he's with us tonight. Here is John Nesbitt. Thank you very much. And when I visit the cavalcade next Tuesday, it will be my privilege to play the host in the story of two human beings. The first of them will be a blacksmith named Tom Davenport, and the second, a tiny little woman who was his wife, Emily. But of all the true stories I've ever found, this one is unique, as it is the case of a man and woman who loved each other very much, and yet somehow found the time to work together upon an invention that has changed our world. So Tom the blacksmith, his wife, Emily, in story, and myself in the flesh, will all be with you on Cavalcade next Tuesday night. Until then, good evening. Tonight's original cavalcade play, Troublesome Jane, was written by Luther Davis and adapted from a section in the book, Female Persuasion, by Margaret Theron Thorpe, published by the Yale University Press. The music for the DuPont cavalcade is composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Boreen. Cavalcade star tonight, Ruth Hussey, is currently starring in the Broadway hit, Goodbye, My Fancy. Kenny Del Mar will soon be seen in the new Broadway production, Texas Little Darling. Your narrator, Ted Pearson.
Cavalcade of America, directed by John Zoller, came to you this evening from the stage of the Belasco Theater in New York and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Join the fun on People Are Funny tonight on NBC.